So hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Eric Chen, independent curator based in Shanghai, uh, as well as the curatorial director for Design Miami. And I'm here uh, today with Thomas Thwaites, the uh, hi, inimitable. Hi. Hey, Thomas. <laughs> uh, Thomas is the inimitable um, London-based designer, design pro uh, provocateur, uh, perhaps um, best known for his heroic efforts uh, at doing everything from building a toaster from scratch uh, to living life as a goat as in like the animal, the, the goat. Um, <laughs> what is it, not my greatest, greatest ever life or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah, you know, we were in Bethlehem because we were both in Tel Aviv um, because uh, you had kindly uh, participated in an exhibition that I um, worked on at the Design Museum Halom, uh, the, which opened in, in December called State of Extremes. Um, now that, that that show was sort of looking at uh, how design and designers, um, uh, what role they might play in kind of articulating and moderating um, and, and mediating uh, the sort of condition of extremes that, that one might argue that we found ourselves in and, and, and continue to find ourselves in, uh, whether we were talking about extreme weather, extreme uh, political polarization, extreme uh, inequality and kind of the mechanisms. We wanted to look at the mechanisms that, that drive those extremes um, and why we're kind of barreling, it seems, constantly towards ever greater extremes. And, you know, you had um, your project, Voodoo Economics, uh, in there. And, and, and I was just curious to hear from you sort of, you know, a few months later, uh, you know, what, what uh, uh, you know, if, 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 how how you might reflect back on uh, on the experience of of, of being in, in the show, which is of course closed now, though it though it'll mm. reopen at some point. Yeah, I mean, I I, I think your I don't know, you know, uh, your kind of curatorial sense, Eric, was was pretty good because you know you as in you know you kind of spoke about um you know calling it the state of extremes and like a state you know as you kind of wrote is not the same as uh like an extreme moment it's kind of a sort of a feeling of like you know just being in a kind of you know constant extreme sort of uh situation and so yeah like this kind of global pandemic is you know is like another sort of addition to that you know long kind of line of extreme things that seem to be happening um and so i guess for me the big question is like you know it is it does this kind of state just continue and it's this like rolling series of kind of you know feeling like we're in like this extreme sort of zone and and you know the the extreme itself is the new normal or is there like a kind of you know a uh, sort of catastrophic change you know um which is you know are we building up to something or or is this you know or is it just a kind of a feeling of you know endless extremes kind of thing um and of course you can't really know because you can't really kind of you know you, you don't have like a sense of the arc of history or you know maybe there is an arc of history maybe there isn't you know um and so yeah so i kind of you know as ever and like constantly sort of fluctuating between this like oh this is definitely building up to something versus like oh yeah well maybe everybody in the world always thinks that you know they're living in a very extreme moment and blah 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 so um yeah, yeah like maybe so well, well i mean we we're talking about your your cycles of of, of beard growth uh <laughs> <laughs> earlier now than uh, than in, in in December, but um, maybe it's sort of a cyclical thing, right? I mean that, that that things always sort of go go are are pushed to extremes until they kind of uh, break down and 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 something else uh, happens anew, or maybe this this is a, another way of articulating the cycles of creation and destruction that that have you know gone back uh, that have been with us um, mm. uh, 
since <laughs> for, for, uh, for a very long time, or, or another way of saying, you know, or talking about the, the swings of the pendulum. Yeah, it's, it comes down to belief, doesn't it? If you believe, you know, if you believe in some kind of, you know, cyclical thing, there's that phrase, history doesn't repeat, it rhymes, which I, you know, which kind of springs to my mind. Um, and so will this present crisis be the one that kind of, yeah, leads to a new normal or whatever, um, or a, a it, you know, a new normal of crises, or will it be this sort of, you know, okay, finally the world will change, um, you know, we can't carry on as we've been going, etc., etc. and, and uh, yeah, and I don't know, what do you think? <laughs> I mean, how does it feel to you? Well, I mean, like you, like you mentioned um, that the exhibition State of Extremes sort of feels somehow more resonant now, uh, it, but, mm. but of course, it's not just that show, uh, you know, they're, they're uh, talking to other curators or, 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 or just uh, looking back at what a lot of people were, were already working on. A lot of things and exhibitions and, and, and projects feel a lot more resident now. I mean, and, and that's not because we're all prophets or, or fortune tellers. I, I think it's more because, of course, we mm. all had a sense, or many of us had a sense uh, as observers of the world that something was, was going horribly awry, uh, mm. right? And, um, I guess from uh, sort of kind of building on uh, building on what you were just saying, I, I guess for me, with uh, in, th in thinking through state of extremes, you know, one uh, the sort of uh, uh, broader conclusion was that you know these processes of of generating extremes are moving towards ever uh, uh, more uh, more extreme scenarios, is kind of structurally built into uh, human cognition uh, into uh, the, the ways uh, societies work, um, and that uh, uh, they're, they're so embedded that in some ways uh, you could only see uh, the so you you could only see them heading towards a kind of breakdown, and and and, and, and only mm -hmm. by things snapping somehow um, uh, could you kind of reset. And and I, I guess for I mean. That that's that, that's what I find so fascinating about uh, you know speculative design you know which is a sort of field that you're you're sort of uh, 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 included in because a lot of speculative design is about starting with a question or a scenario and then kind of taking it to its logical conclusion as far as you can T taking it to mm. uh, a extreme. I mean, is it fair to say that that uh, with your work the ultimate destination is is failure? Right, because, because you're you're you know you're a toaster. You I mean you really went to great lengths by you were chipping mica off of mountains, leaching copper for for, for for the wiring from from copper mines, and of course, as you said yourself, you know, uh, in in the end, it it's it sort yeah, of yeah uh, chaotic. Yeah. And, and for goat man, I mean, you you tried to literally walk, eat, sleep. <laughs> uh, yeah, just even as a goat, but of course, that's impossible. I think my kind of constant um, <laughs> problem is, uh, you know, I keep on running into like complexity and, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and how kind of complex, seemingly simple things are in a way like, um, and, you, you know, and it's not, Fa you know, it's not, it's not like I fail on purpose. <laughs> it, it's just, it turns out, you know, it turns out what I want to do <laughs> um, is is like really kind of complex and difficult kind of thing. But, uh, you know, to me anyway, at least at the beginning, it doesn't seem like it, it should be. Um, and so, yeah, it's like, you know, maybe it's also kind of growing up a bit and kind of becoming wiser and more mature and sort of, you know, realizing what you don't know and realizing just how, you know, uh, complex reality is, you know, um, and yeah. And so that's why I think there's a, you know, even given the complexity of, reality and the you know the knowledge that you're going to fail to become a goat or whatever in terms of speculative design i think it's like really important to try and do it 
because that's when you kind of are forced to confront the complexity of the world. And I think, you know, in fiction, um, it's quite easy to, you know, you can just make all the cogs fit neatly together and, you know, and there's none of the kind of the impossible messiness of, of confronting the world, uh, you know. And so, uh, yeah, so in terms of failure, I think it's, yeah, it's failure because, you know, either I'm just not capable <laughs> of doing what I want to do and other people might be much better at doing it. Um, or it's failure because, you know, the, it's a, you know, the, the, the world and kind of acting in the world to do anything, you know, to do anything is, is quite, uh, you know, is quite complex. Um, and so, yeah, so, you know, it's easy to fail. <laughs> well, I mean, as, as they say, you know, it's, it's often more important to, to fail. Like you learn more from, from failing than, 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 than uh, in, in succeeding very often. But you're, you're failing on a kind of, uh, you're failing in a way that almost has sort of epic lessons for us as a, <laughs> for us as a species, no? I mean, like, like one, one can draw a certain, uh, almost like morals uh, from from the tales that you spin. The goat project was about trying to lose this kind of sense of human destiny, um, and it was about trying to kind of recognise that there is no, you know, there is no destiny for humanity, like built into the workings of the universe, you know, unless, you know, unless I get religion or something like that. Um, and so, and so in terms of like a, the creature that we are, this kind of, you know, biological creature that has been kind of, you know, brought so, you know, so low, let's say by uh, this kind of tiny, you know, tiny, tiny, tiny nanoscopic kind of virus, um, for example, you, you know, we have to recognize that, that humans are just kind of creatures. We don't have this kind of manifest destiny amongst the stars kind of thing, even though our kind of literature seems to sort of, you know, our fiction seems to kind of feed us that kind of, uh, or, or we feed ourselves that sort of sense. And so for me, the GOAT project, the moral that kind of came out of it was like just trying to be kind of more humble and trying to recognize that there is no kind of necessary upwards trajectory and and you know having read the kind of you know the sort of Stephen Pinker better angels of our nature sort of you know read that book and and that does you know which is all about how humankind is you know living its living much better than we ever have and we should all kind of stop worrying and you know let's just kind of um yeah acknowledge that that the world today is a much better place than it was before and it will keep you know going up almost you know the the curve will keep going maybe we need yeah. to let go of that and kind of understand i don't know that that there, yeah. that there isn't that kind of upwards trajectory and and so again it comes back to this kind of crises and you know and reversal and pendulums and so there's a there's a, a non-zero but very small risk that tms can induce a seizure so that's the hardcore risk so this is the tms coil it's on and it's set so that it'll, it'll do stimulation if i step on this you can hear it, it makes yeah. a clicking noise. Yeah. Basically because the magnetic field sort of comes on and off so quickly that it actually creates what are called the Rentz forces that make a physical sound. I it could be, um, who's that trip trapping over my bridge? Yeah. There are old Tibetan ruins that are quite ritual and magic ways is done, and spiritual ways is done within shamanic tradition. Mm -hmm. And one thing is in fact that you let the outer form or the movement, that you start by imitating that, and by that yeah. you, you can better get a feel of how to become that animal. When I was small, for some reason I decided I would eat from a bush. <laughs> without using my hands. 
eating directly from a tree without using your hands was profound. Taking hands out of the equation yet doing something so familiar like eating made me feel like a different creature in a way and so I was, guess I was trying to, I'm trying to recapture that feeling. The problem is without being able to know what experience of a goat or whatever is like, it's not clear how you would know whether you would succeed it, right? Yeah. So you could imagine that you could start to inactivate parts of the brain and that that might sort of be a sort of fairly crude approximation. So for instance, I mean if you could just turn off language in a person. We can't do that at the moment, but imagine you could. Not just your ability to enunciate the words, but your ability to, to perhaps manipulate those ideas in that kind of fashion anyway. And if you could turn it off and turn it back on, then you're getting there, right? Because you could, you could then ask somebody. Maybe becoming an animal is about relinquishing control over your own fate, in a way. Because I suppose we're all trying to control our lives and kind of fight this battle to kind of retain control over our lives. But I think it's a battle you can't win. And so perhaps trying to become an animal is a, it's, it's like a, in a way, a admission that mission that you can't control your life. What this project about becoming an animal is really getting at is this desire to experience the world from something else's perspective <clears throat> because we're all completely trapped inside our own brain and our own perception of the world and so what I'm trying to do is to try and kind of get outside of myself and try and experience the world from a completely different perspective. A goat, it's living in the same physical space but it sees these objects in a completely different way. I think the one thing we can say for sure is that things will change and we just have to hope and work towards making sure that they uh, change for the better. And uh, yeah. on that note, I think we are out of time. So uh, thank you, Thomas. It was so good Thanks, to... Eric. Yeah. Thanks to everybody uh, out there. Bye, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.